We have an exciting few weeks upcoming inside of Diablo Immortal because we do have a lot of teases coming through regarding the new class. So today, I wanna dive into a few things that we can do to really put ourselves in the best position for this class change, assuming that you may wanna try out the new class, which I believe is the Tempest. By the way, we did just get another thing from Blizzard yesterday over on Twitter reading, from the Squall, a new warrior is born. Essentially confirming again that it's the Tempest. What I think happened here is, all of these leaks had come out regarding what the class is. So maybe they're just like, all right, we're gonna roll with it. And we're gonna start doing more teases that are a little bit more obvious to the class because it has not yet officially been announced. It says on Tuesday, May 7th, that's only four days from today, a major announcement will reshape Sanctuary forever. Are you ready, adventurers? Now, if we take a look at the calendar that we were looking at over here yesterday, that's talking about the 7th is Tuesday. Then we have Trials of the Warrior, which is probably now, I mean, if we look back at that image, it says a new warrior is born. Yesterday, I was saying that that was potentially the new tower event, but now it's I'm thinking that this is actually for the new class, Trial of the Warrior. And then a special event warm-up comes after that as well. So maybe we're actually looking at this new class being launched this month rather than in June when I was personally anticipating it. Now, from the date that we're looking at right here, it seems that on the 7th is gonna be an announcement. Does not mean that the class is going to be coming out on that day. And then we'll probably have the class releasing mid-month if it happens, if the launch happens right after the event Trials of the Warrior. We will have to see. But I wanna go over a few things that we really can do to prepare ourselves for this. Very simple things, some things that if you haven't been doing, you should start doing them right now. Now, I'm gonna go into my bag and take a look at all the stuff that I have. Essentially, I save my mysterious legendary items for when a new Hell or Inferno difficulty hits. That means if I'm sitting at Inferno difficulty six, I would save all of these until the next Inferno difficulty seven or whatever it is they may call it. Cause then I could use all of this and it'll upgrade. It'll give me gear of the proper level, quick, really great gear that I could wear. But something else that this will do, it, it will bring you essences. It'll give you different abilities for the gear you're using. Now with an incoming class, which I do plan to class change myself too. I'm loving the Crusader, but I will be class changing to the Tempest to try it out at least for a month or two, at least. If I even don't like it, I will try it out that long. I will use all of these mysterious legendary items so that I can get as many essences as possible from day one. Remember, we're gonna be getting a new class with no essences, just with flat skills. We're gonna to wanna to be able to make builds. So in having a bunch of this stuff collected and saved up, it's gonna allow you to, on day one, have a whole bunch of pieces of gear and essences at your disposal that you can then do something with. Remember, when you class change as well, you will get some type of gear from the class change, but it's nice to have a lot of options. You get this kind of stuff from events, from doing different things inside of the game as rewards. As you can see from a bunch of these, do we get anything over here? Little mysterious legendary item right there just from winning one match win a match within six minutes, you get one. All these types of things are where you can get these types of rewards. Oh, do we have any over here? None over here, but we probably have some in Fractured Plane, which just dropped today. Actually, we don't. Actually, we don't. So it's only Conqueror where you can grab these as of today, at least. But it's not only about that. That's not the only way you can get gear. Notice we're hanging out over here by the Rarities and Antiques vendor. Here, you can do your gambling, as I like to call it, and you could go for Mysterious Weapon and Mysterious Primary Armor. After you do 10 of these, it gets more expensive, so I don't ever recommend doing more than 10 per per day. So I'll get 10 Mysterious Weapons and 10 Primary Armors. To do this, you need gold. I've got 18 and a half million gold saved up, so I can do this for quite a few days and really be able to get more chances at more legendary gear, essentially more essences that I could use to build out. Notice what we're saying here is, get yourself as many essences as you possibly can so that you can complete any builds that we may be sharing with you guys here on YouTube. As you can see right here at the essence transfer, let me switch things up a little bit. 
we're basically stacked out for for our crusader i think we're missing a few little things here these are the only two pieces that i'm missing all right now keep in mind the loyalty bonus i'm at 294 of 400 once i get 106 more pieces of legendary gear which to be honest is not that much you could easily pull in 20 per day from open world farming or from farming highly dense populated areas this right here you can choose any essence that you want so when you realize oh the tempest has this incredible uh essence that i need to use well you could make that your loyalty and you could choose the one that you get once you hit that 400th piece of gear so that's another nice way that you can get yourself some essences but it's not all about essences and what i'm about to share is not one of the most important but it is also important notice my charm uh my charm is actually trash for my crusader having been crusader now and the i've probably played crusader for five months maybe six months i cannot get better rolls anytime that i try and make my charm better i don't pull in the new skill bonus so i'm only sitting with drawn quarter and consecration right now two percent each it has been my most difficult class to get a good charm on but if you want to prepare for this so that you're more prepared and have the chance of potentially getting yourself stuff for charms save up your charms save up as many charms as you can you could turn them into dust where do we have it do i have do i have any dust over here we only have 10 right here you could save up your powder and then you could use all of that powder to try and roll yourself some charms for some extra buffs and bonuses that you get from the charm vent the charm system which as we know can be very frustrating at times so is having the uh, the best charm the a deal breaker or like the best thing it helps a little bit but it's not going to be a deal breaker either way but that's a good way you could prepare for that as well and you're going to want to get ready to farm um get ready to do a lot of that circle farming guys my some of my favorite places to do circle farming is and always will be the library of zoltan cool i like to come right over here in this section right here one of my favorite spots to farm often it's taken and i also really like the southern dreadlands which is most recently uh taken all the time which is this section right here really great spot to farm another one that i do like that's a little bit more of a, of a hidden secret where is it it's right up here the desolate gowl decent spot to farm there as well not quite as good as some of the others but those are some of my favorites get ready to do the circle farming this is something that a lot of people don't do and when i look at friends of mine that have really low gear levels their, their gears, I mean, my gear's not even crazy high, but I'm looking at people in the teens that have been playing since day one, and that's just because they don't do enough farming. They don't get enough materials to do that. And in the farming, not only are you upgrading your gear, which is not what's important for today's video, but you're finding new legendary gear. You're getting yourself new essences so that you can build it out. Again, another thing for the essences. Now, something else you're going to want to think of we don't know exactly what the skills are right like we, we know what the skills are called put a video out on that the other day if you want to check it out i'll be linking it down below or at the end of the video but you want to kind of take a look at what gems could be good for the tempests what legendary gems may work so if you're rocking a necromancer and you know that you're going with something that's going to be really good uh, what's the, what's the one for the necromancer i don't even remember right now it was a follower's burden. If you're rocking a follower's burden, you know that it's probably not going to be the best thing for your Tempest. So you may want to think of how you can rework your gems a little bit. Um, I am typically going to enjoy using the gems that I currently have. The ones that I like to use are basically sitting right here. Thinking about the Starfire, I use Void, Gloom, Maw, Blood Soaked Jade, Mother's Lament, and Viper's Bite. We also have to go with some of the ones that are just going to be good everywhere, which is going to be uh, right here, your Pain Clasp gem. It's going to most likely be good with all builds. So just kind of think about what may you be wanting to use. What options may you have for gems? Hard to make a decision until we actually get our hands on the class itself, but not a bad idea to save up a bunch of platinum so you can make some gem purchases. Or if you want to just save up a bunch of your runes, right here you can then go craft any gems that you want to 
from the jeweler, which is quite nice. And of course you have your Taloric Pearls, which I'm almost at 40, which is nice. I will be getting another Blood Soaked Jade. I will continuously get Blood Soaked Jades until the end of time with those pearls. And the last thing I wanted to touch on was cosmetics because this is something that's often in question. Cosmetics have nothing to do with your performance inside of the game, but they do have to do with how you look. So remember, the majority of the cosmetics, let's go over here, are going to be bound to your class. I just got the Iron Gambit. This is bound to my Crusader. We have the Regent of Webs, bound to my Seder. Unholy Passengers, bound. Children of Anarius, bound. Actually, you know what I've never worn? This one. Let's actually equip that one today. We're going to equip that. And I got a sword for that one too, I believe. Here's the purple Children of Anarius one. Beautiful. And uh, let's actually go with the... Tell them. Uh, tell them. Is that the one? No, we'll go with this one right here. Boom. I actually just decided to equip some things because we have them here and we won't have them on any other class. So keep in mind, the only cosmetics that you will have available will be one whatever the class looks like or any cross class cosmetics like phantom market cosmetics we're seeing all those right here as i cycle through them and there are a few others that are cross class like we have this one i believe yes the wings darkness but take a look purchased on class wizard barb monk demon hunter crusader and necro this was from i believe it was either from pre-registering for diablo immortal or it was for pre-registering for Diablo um, Diablo 2. I'm not sure which one it was, or Diablo 4. It was for one of those types of events, but it's not available on the Blood Knight, which tells me it's not going to be available on the new class. Very curious if all of these Phantom Markets will be available for the new class as well. Like, we just got the Mad, Ki the Mad King's Armor. Will this be available on the new character that we're going to be playing as, the new Tempest? Keep in mind that your cosmetics that you maybe have been savoring and you have saved up all on your class will not be available on all of them. As you can see, I have a lot of these that are locked out that I can't use on my Crusader, which is okay. Just something worth noting. And there we go. Look, rocking the uh, purple Anarius. My first time wearing that one. I actually quite like it. So I think that's a good number of tips to kind of get you on the right path so that when the Tempest does drop, you at least have some opportunities to do the most important thing, which is going to be to unlock as many essences as you possibly can. Because guys, this is going to be pretty cool. We have the Trial of the Warrior, which now leads me to believe that it's actually going to be the new class that they just announced recently, or I should say yesterday, on Twitter. Guys, remember... I cover Diablo Mortal every single day. If you want to know what's up, some builds you can use, make sure you subscribe. And by the way, because we are going to be class changing from Crusader, I'm going to be sure to put out a solid Crusader build for you guys very soon. So it's just stamped in time. So if I want to go back to Crusader, at least I know what I'm going back to. I'll see you later.